Hi everybody, Jo here. Thanks for joining me again. It's always lovely to spend time with you. It's Tuesday, so it's time for our little crafty catch up. Now I have to say, I've had so many messages about a card that I did a couple of weeks ago, our, our one layer card. And um, so many of you lovely crafters got in touch and said you'd really enjoyed it. So um, you asked for another one, sort of the same, but different. So obviously I listened to you and we're going to do a similar one today. So again, we're actually working on the card blank itself and um, we're actually bringing in one of our new stencils at Lavinia. So that's nice. We're going to use some of my favourite stamps. I've decorated the envelope too. And I thought we'd just have a nice gentle play. And it's so lovely when you um, embrace a design. You know, as a demonstrator, that really makes me happy. And it is lovely to hear from you. And I must say hello to Laurie and her sister who are watching. They watch every Tuesday. So thank you for joining us. Hope you've got your brew and your cheeky biscuit. And um, they do find themselves saying all our little sayings. So I bet they're having their cheeky biscuit as we... Um, as we craft and um shall we start now i'm going to use a dl card sometimes called slimline cards um just because it's a size that i like um i just think they're very elegant and we're going to work on the card blank itself so we'll put this to one side you know like i do <laughs> You've always got to find the one side, haven't you? And we're going to start with our stamping. So I'm just going to get my usual copy of paper, just because for me, um, I just find it's a bit better. Notice I've just got a black mark here. So I'm going to use my rubber, see if it'll rub out. If not, I shall cover it with some stencil work, so it's not a problem. But actually, I think we've, we've managed to get rid of that these things happen so look at that I haven't even started and I got a black mark <laughs> so as I say for me the way I'm going to approach this is coming with my stamping first and I love this group poppies I've had these for so long and I do think you know no matter how many new stamps I get and I love the new stamps but there are some good old favorites that I go to again and again I'm going to turn my card on the side and I'm just going to be mindful to get my piece of copy of paper and just put it here because I'm leaning on this. And I don't want any more marks. So I'm going to start with my favourite one, the actual poppy from this set. And I'm going to start and stamp in the black in the nocturne. So how are you keeping? How are things going? I hope you're having a good week. Now I'm going to stamp this sort of about maybe a third of the way down. And again, you know me, I have a thing about things being in the middle, so I'm not stamping it in the middle. I'm just going to stamp it off side. I just almost don't want it too symmetrical. And as always, I'm just going to give it a quick wet and then a wipe with my Inky Binky. Now, I've had so many messages about this Inky Binky. I've had an Inky Binky for years. And I blame the master himself, Sir Tim Holtz. Um, he was the original Inky Binky man. And um, it's just a cloth. I've got to be honest, you want it... Um, sort of a cotton or a lint so that um although if there's somebody out there with fabric they'll probably know better than me but it's just a cloth that doesn't have fuzzy bits on it um and i've got to be honest this is an actual um napkin you know like getting posh restaurants and you can actually buy them online and i just buy a pack of four so that it can be washed but if anything was to happen to i've got spares you know me i always like a spare one just in case so that's all it is I mean, some, some crafters use tea towels. You know, you use what... I always say this, you use whatever suits you. I just find this lovely napkin is just the right size for me. Now, I'm going to stamp a couple of these and I've just angled them. Do remember, you can alter the shape of your stamp. Just We're just going to angle them just a little, but I'm just going to wipe my fingers. Just adds a little bit of movement and I think it makes your design look a little bit more 
sort of realistic and a bit more natural. So I'm liking the way that's building up. So again, just wipe my stamp with my inky binky. And then there's this gorgeous little almost seed heads that come with this set. So we'll have a couple of these as well. And you know, no matter how many times I stamp this, it never looks the same. So I'm thinking one this side. I think when I'm sort of trying to make things look natural, try not to overthink it. And let's have one sort of, I mean, it might be for you, you need to actually turn it around like this to have a look. I'm just so used to working on the side. It's just the way my head works, but I'm sure that says more about me than, we'll put this one just sort of coming off a bit because they do, don't they? They spread around. Well, in some places they do. I adore poppies, but I don't manage to grow them. Right, so that's the group poppies. They seem to like certain um, types of ground, I think. I'm just going to block that a little. It's uh, got a, a long open time, so that means it dries slowly. And um, I don't want to smudge that. So that's that lovely bit done. And I'm thinking, just want to ground it a little. So I'm just going to come in with my fine liner. And, and again, I'm not going to overthink this. I just want to put a few lines and very loosely, holding the pen very loosely. As I say, don't overthink it. Just want it to look like a natural squiggle. And I think we'll add some of that lovely ferns. So we've got our new woodland ferns. Now I have to say, I actually keep these stamps. I have a little container that we decorated to workshop, to be honest, for my pound stamps. And I keep these in there because they are tinkers. They're a bit like Pippin, they can go and wander. So that's where I keep mine. Now again, I'm thinking, let's just add a little bit, because you do get ferns growing, don't you? Just at the base, sort of where you've got poppies. And I think it just complements the whole design. We're going to have three of these, so let's have that one there. And then let's come in with the other shape. Because one sort of is growing left and one right. And then let's just put this one... We'll just bring it down a little bit there and then come back in with our fine liner and just give that a little bit of a zhuzh. A couple of little dots after that. Yeah, there we go. So I think that's building up nicely. I told you, look at them. They're just alive, those little woodland ferns. And we'll give that a blot, keeping our good habits. Now, I want to bring in... We've got the gorgeous fairy charms and I love these and I'm thinking there's three of them and it's this one almost that's on a chain I want to bring in and if we look at the finished design, if I can bring that across, sorry for leaning across you, I've stamped it at the bottom and then at the top with the word over it so it's, they're actually coming in sideways and I just think that's a lovely way to use them for a change. So... Now again, I've just caught the edge, so just with my inky binky, just wipe that off. I'm going to do the one at the top first, so do excuse me if my head comes over. And I'm thinking we'll have it about there. And then, although that looks nice, I just want to even it up a bit and sort of give a bit of balance to the design. So, gentle tapping again. And maybe me, I've just cut the edge, look. And so we'll come in from this side and we'll just, again, take our time. And I think about there should do it. Yes, I like that. Nice bit of balance. I mean, I almost think, you know what? If you needed a sympathy card, I think this, let me have a look. On my, I'm going to use one of the heartfelt verses. If I just take all these off, just to show you, I do think, you know, if you had to put there with love and sympathy, 
I think that could make a sympathy card. I mean, they're not nice cards to make, but do you know what? I think this would make, dare I say, a lovely one. But we're actually going to use the With Love. And again, I used the acetate just to check and look at that. As luck would have it, the With Love just fits perfectly on that there. See, that was a stroke of luck, wasn't it? I could tell you I tried all my stamps to check which one would fit. <laughs> so we ink that up. And again, I'm just going to bring this in. So do excuse me if my head comes over. But I just want to get it just perfect there. Yeah, happy with that. Lovely. So we'll file that over there now. And then just the last little bit of stamping. I just want something in the background here. And I'm going to come in. I've got this gorgeous Sacred Spells. And this, again, talk about, oh, I've had this stamp for years. I think it's one of the first lot I bought. But I have to say, on the back of my stamp look, I mean, look at the colour of it. I have got an arrow and for me when I use I love script stamps in the background but I just with my um sharpie pen I've put an arrow because I am the sort of person who has stamped this upside down so I do find that helps me and I'm going to come in with morning mist for this because I just want this to add a little bit of oomph a little bit of interest in the background and I know you could say, why didn't I stamp this first? But I find doing it this way will actually look like I have. Now, I want to use second generation, so I'm taking my first off on my copy of paper. If I was organised, I could have had a spare piece of card and used that, couldn't I? And I'm just going to come in just sort of over the middle of the design. There we go. And it's just enough that it's in the background and if I stand up and bring this up to show you, look, you would never know that I hadn't stamped that background first. But for me, because I've got my main design, it just gives me an idea of where to stamp that. And that's exactly how I wanted it, subtle and in the background. So we'll give that a blot as well. belt and braces so if we've blotted quick bit with the heat gun and then what we're going to do we're going to come in with our stencil now I'm using one of our new stencils and this one here if I pop it on here well, what can I say? Beautiful. I mean this could be flames I think it would work beautiful background with the dragons and it's called, oh, look at that. I wrote the name on it and I've smudged it. Dynamic. That wasn't very dynamic of me, was it? My problem is if I take two or three stencils out of the packets, then I can never remember which one goes in which packet. So I'm trying to be organised and write the name on them. But obviously I was in a rush and put this one away and it's smudged. But enough that I can read it. So we've got dynamic. And... I want to put this at an angle and because this is such a beautiful big stencil I can actually put this I want to go right across the card and again I'm working flat because I want to take it over the edge and it will start at this edge and actually go nicely over that edge and we're going to come in with two colours today well actually three well two colours sort of a a green and the Sahara which is sort of a yellowy orange sort of tone but with the green I'm going to come in with lime punch and introduce a little bit of Bermuda just at the end just to add some tone just to do a little bit of blending with our colours so what we'll do is as always I just take the lids off now I've got to be mindful here that you can see because you know what I'm like I just tend to craft the way I craft and forget that you're watching. Well, I hope you're watching. I hope you've not nodded off. Right, and I'm going to use my stencil brushes. So I've got my one that I use for yellow ink and my one I use for green ink. And what I tend to do is, I know I've used a darker colour. So I'm just going to give the green one a bit of a rub with me inky binky. There we go. And we'll start with the yellow first. 
So again, I'm just going to dip the brush in my ink and then just dip a little bit off on the lid. I don't want to waste it. So I'll pop it on the lid and I just want to come in and gently, gently, I just want to tickle. Now I can see where I've stamped. So I can go around the stamp. But to be fair, I don't mind going over it. And I just want to add some yellow sort of around where my poppy is. Just to almost give, if I lift up, I'm holding it here. I don't want to... Yes, that's lovely. I don't want to, um, I could tape this down, but you know me, I just find I can just hold it. And then I'm going to come in with my lighter colour. So this is the Lime Punch, and again, take some off on the lid. But I'm actually going to come on here because I've got the most colour on my, on my brush here. And as I come towards the yellow, as I'm using the colour up, it'll be lighter for when I blend the two colours together. So again, gently, gently. And again here, I'll start here, further away. Nice, gentle, just tickle. Nice light touch with your stencil brush. Don't need to sort of be heavy handed. And we'll just come in and let's have a look how that's looking. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, if I wanted at this point, I could come back in with my yellow in the middle and just add a little bit of yellow over that join. But to be honest, I think it's blended beautifully. And then last of all, and obviously I did the paler green first, and now I'm coming in with the deeper colour. And again, I'm going to start further away over here, where it will be deepest, and then come in and blend into that lighter green. And the same on this bottom corner, just at the very bottom corner, I want a little bit of darker colour. And let's lift up and have a look. Yes. Now, I have to say, can you see that? So there's the top. And if I show you, there's the bottom. And I just think that's a lovely, lovely blend. Now, I'm mindful we've got this corner here. So while we've got our stencil, let's just pop it on this corner here. And I'm just going to use, oh, I don't know if you heard that. Eric's just sat under my table. He's fast asleep and he's dreaming. So if you hear a funny noise, it's just Eric dreaming. Yeah. All right, all right, Eric. Wakey, wakey, mate. Are you chasing? Who are you chasing? I'll just put my brushes there. So if I show you, that's what we've got so far. And this is why I'm working flat on the front and the back. Now, a couple of things that I'm going to do. I'm going to put the lids on my ink pads. It's quite funny, I'm recording this first thing in the morning because um, Eric's at the vet's later. Bless him, he has um, hip problems and back problems and he's on a painkillers, but the physio, he has to go for physio, bless him. He's ever so good. Um, but the physio last week said his pain's got too bad, so she thinks he needs more painkillers. So we're going up to the vet's today to see what the vet thinks. So getting back to this, um, we've got this lovely ink on our stencil and I don't want to lose that. So what I do is I tend to keep off cuts of card and I'm sure you're the same. Well, this will work Eric up, won't it? So I'm going to spritz where the ink is. There we go, mate. Nice shower for you. And I'm just going to put that on my spare piece of card and put my spritzer bottle over there. And then just with my inky binky, give it a bit of a dab. And this does two things. It will just clean the stencil, but also give me a spare background. Now, when I was making the original card, I had a long piece of card spare. And this is the background that it made. I mean, look at that when it dried. We've got that lovely Sahara colour here. And then we've gone into that beautiful green. Now, that to me, I'm thinking, I mean, I could use it that way. I could stamp a meadow, but I think that way, I think maybe I could make it into a bookmark. But for me, these are the on a day when, you know, I don't really know what I want to do and mojo's maybe gone a bit. Get a, get a background like this and just think what you could use. Maybe just a fairy. What about the woodland sprite? Oh, yeah, I think she looked lovely on there. And then the moon, yeah. You see, that's what happens. You think your mojo's gone. You pick up a background and all of a sudden, you're thinking of all the things you can do with it. So just give it a minute because obviously you've reactivated that ink with your water. It's a dye-based ink. 
So just give it a minute to actually get into the card, lift up. Oh, there we go. And again, look at that. And I would always let it dry naturally if possible. You could force it dry with your heat tool, but it will look better. You'll get more. Oh, you see here, this is going to dry fabulously. So we'll put that over there to dry. And then we'll just give this another spritz. And Mr Inky can clean it up. Do be mindful with your stencils. I try and get in the habit of patting them just in case there's any bits that could lift up. And we'll just clean this, turn it over, pat. There we go. And we'll file that over there. Now, just before we add some colour on the back, I'm just going to bring my paper back in and just to finish the back off you know what we'll just stamp that lovely little poppy on the back so let's turn this round you know i love to decorate the back of cards and there's a funny story there i'll tell you why but shh, don't tell anybody else please because i do tell you a lot of my secrets so you know remember what you hear of at craft club we have that saying don't we stays at craft club there we go and um we used to have another labrador test beautiful she was a, a lovely golden labrador and um carl and i obviously do a lot of walking with them um, tess and eric and we noticed when we went past people's houses obviously you're not being nosy but when you're a dog walker you, you do sort of look don't you i mean i tended to look at the gardens and get ideas and see what plants they had just grounding my poppy little on the back look and what i noticed was when people had the cards in the windows the front is always facing the inside of the house and often when you walked past all you saw was a lot of blank cards on the windowsill so i like to decorate the back for fellow dog walkers so people that are walking past and they'll see this lovely design so in my little head, that's why I like to decorate the back. So that's why we're, we're working this way. So we'll give that a blot and let's add some colour. Now, again, these are lovely quality card blanks, so nothing will go through to the middle. But it, again, it's important to keep this area clean so we keep the middle clean. Now, I want to add some colour. And like I was saying um, a couple of weeks ago when we did our original one layer card, I don't want to use my watercolour techniques just in case um, it distorts the card at all. So I'm going to come in with some, um, and these are just polychromo pencils, and I'm going to lean on my kitchen towel and I've gone for three colours and I'm just going to come in with the deeper of the blue nice circular motions and I'm at the base of the poppy where I know it will be deeper and the inside of the poppy here so again I'm not going mad with my thinking too much about the colouring my next colour my mid blue and I'm just going to blend that again lovely circular motions you don't get lines then you see and also I'm just going to add some of this mid blue on here now again you can do your poppies any color obviously we get beautiful orange poppies yellow poppies here we have um, welsh poppies cambrian poppies cumbrian poppies they grow beautifully in cumbria hmm <laughs> not in my garden and again we have the red poppies um i think they're canadian poppies aren't they if my memory serves me correct but for me it's got to be the mechanopsis the himalayan poppy i adore these and I had some friends years ago and um, I used to go and help look after um, the lady and her husband, oh, in his garden in Woodford, he had the most gorgeous at the bottom in the orchard. It had Mechanopsis poppies, the Himalayan poppies, and they the conditions must have been perfect. He planted one and, you know, oh, he got little ones coming up every year. They loved it there. They thrived. He dug some up, gave them to me. no. As much as I love them, they died in my garden. So it's the conditions just weren't right. His orchard was perfect for them. So this is the nearest I get to my, my Himalayan poppy. So that's why we're going blue. Now, if you wanted, 
you could decoupage this but I just think with a one layer that looks lovely as it is so I'm really happy with that and again didn't take a lot did it and the colouring wasn't a lot of colouring at all what I am going to add now is I'm going to come in with my chalk pastel pencils and we're going to add some shade now I've shown you various ways of adding shade but I always like to show you extra ways and before now we've used our grey pen haven't we to add shade we've used our charcoal pencils but this time I'm going to come in with my chalk pastel pencil and to keep the colour tones I'm going for this light blue it's actually called turquoise blue and I'm just going to get my biodegradable cotton bud and I'm just going to add some shade just under here and again I'm just going to blend it now I could use my finger and quite often you've seen me I do but just because I'm trying to keep this as clean as possible I'm going to use my, my cotton bud so here on the poppy I'm just thinking we're not adding a moon or a sun I just want to add a little bit of shade so I'm just going to the right of my stems. So I'll go underneath and then on the right hand side. So again, we'll have some under there, under there, just at the base here. So on here, we'll add a little bit of shade. And I tend to, two, two ways I could either add my pencil and smudge it as I go or I'm thinking for this one, I'll just add the pencil all the way around and then I'll do the smudging. So we'll add a little bit on here, a little bit here, because I can always add some more then. I can see how it's looking. A little bit on here and let's just add a little bit at the base. Oh, and we want some on this lovely here. So. Let's come in now. And, and the smudging, as I say, two things. It will fix the pastel pencil, but also I think it just adds to the effect, the smudging. Just makes it look more like a shadow because it's not as perfect then. Sort of fuzzies it a bit. Which is why I'm probably not over careful about where I add my shadow because then I'm going to almost smudge it out. And then if I wanted any more, I could come in. So I just think I need a little bit more under there. And again. A bit deeper there. Just playing now. Can you see that one there for me? Just needs a... And I love the contrast with the green. And then we'll, we'll just add a little bit under the, the base as well, under there. Again, we want this to be nice, don't we? So little touches here and this is just such a lovely way of adding a bit of oomph now I'm going to put this pencil back because again I'm very careful with these and I'm just going to file that very careful she says and files it on the floor so if I bring that up can you see how that lovely just adds to the whole design. And again, we've not done anything difficult, but I'm hoping you can see it looks a nice classy image. So time for the little finishing tricks. And we're going to come in with a, a signal. And this is a beautiful blue one. <laughs> I thought it might have a fancy name, but no, it's just called blue. And we're just going to add some little highlights. So on the little dots here look almost like the chain I think that little bit of sparkle will just add and what I'm actually going to do is come in with my white signal first and just add the white highlights here and on here a couple down here I don't want to I don't want to overcook it and again on here and here and then once I've added oh my heart and then when I've added the white I can always come back and add some more but then I'm thinking of just adding a little bit of blue here 
don't want to over but just a little bit and you can smudge this a little just to add that bit of sparkle but like I say I don't want to over sparkle it so we'll have a little bit at the base here And then just on here, just on those two and a little bit there, I'm thinking, let's have a look, what do you think? Now again, you could add a little bit more, but I don't think it needs, I could come in with my stickles, but I think that, that sparkle on the Posca, the lovely Posca sparkle pens you could use at this point, I think that's just enough for me, subtle. And then finally, to add the little finishing touch, just going to come in with my Posca. So again, a good shape. And I'm just going to come straight in and add some splats. Now again, you can tap it with your brush if you want. We'll add a few on the back, but I just like to live dangerously and give it some splats. And for me, the best bit is when I almost get a run here, look, Look at that shape. Now you couldn't get that if you were dotting it. And for me, that's the that's the bit I love. Now, what it does mean though is I need to wipe up those bits here because it does go everywhere. So that's our design finished. Obviously, I can't fold this in half because I need the Posca to dry. But that's the finished one for today. What I will do is bring in our original one, which is here, and I'm hoping we can get that side by side. And just to remind you, there's the envelope again, stamped in the nocturne, and then a little bit of the, um, the morning mist in the background again. I'm going to be posting this, so permanent ink only. Oh, look at that. Eric's dog hair. You didn't see that, did you? I'll edit that out, don't worry. If only you knew how to edit things out. So, there we go. I'm hoping you enjoy that. And I'm hoping you have a go. So, for those ladies who asked for another one-layer card, we have a nice little poppy design. Send in with love from me over to you. And I hope you have a lovely week. I hope life's kind to you. It's not so good for some at the minute, so... I'm hearing my thoughts and prayers and um, I'm wishing you a good week and I'll see you again next week for another crafty catch up. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.